Hello and welcome to the first of our SEMA P3 Performance Strategy Lecture Recaps. OK, Lecture 1, Risk and Governance. First thing we looked at was Enterprise Governance. How are we governing our enterprise? We looked at Conformance. How are we covering Corporate Governance requirements? We looked at Performance. How are we covering risks? Have we got a good strategy in place? And what about our business governance? We looked at the SEMA strategic scorecard. This covered our strategic position, which we might look at via some sort of SWOT analysis. We may try and judge our future position. We then will look at our strategic options. What are our options for moving forward? And how are we going to implement those strategic options? Strategic implementation. Finally, strategic risks. What risks are there that this strategy might not work? So that's enterprise governance. This brought us on to look at different types of risk. Remember we looked at two-way risk. This was upside risk and downside risk, as opposed to pure risk. A pure risk only covers downside risk. That's the risk of something like a fire. You know, there's no upside to that. We then went on to categorise our risks. First we looked at political, legal and regulatory risk. These all relate to the regime. So political risk is the risk of instability or change in the government. Legal risk is the risk that you're going to get some sort of action taken out against you. Regulatory risk is changes in regulations affecting the firm. And compliance risk is penalties due to non-compliance. OK, so the second type of risk we look at was business risk. Business risk covers a few aspects. The first is strategic risk, and that's simply the risk that your strategy doesn't work out. We then looked at product risk, the risk that the product is not as successful as you expected it to be. Commodity price risk, this is the risk that the price affects the profit, i.e. the price of the commodities that you're buying affects the profit of the firm. Product reputation risk, this is the risk that something happens to your product or your product gets a bad reputation and it affects the sales. example we had of that was McLaren buggies cutting fingers off small children. That's always going to affect the sales of a buggy. OK, operational risk is the risk that you have poor systems in place and it leads to losses. And contractual inadequacy risk. Have you got everything written into your contract to cover all aspects to ensure that the business doesn't make a loss on it? OK, economic risk then. This was just the risk that there are changes in the economy. And this also relates to financial risk. Financial risk covers several aspects. There's credit risk. That's just the risk of not getting paid. There's currency risk. The risk that currency movements go against you and you make a loss. Again, interest rate risk similar. If interest rates go the, lo the wrong way, it may affect the profit of the firm and gearing risk, taking on too much debt, not being able to pay your interest. OK, technology risk affects firms who are maybe in a fast-moving industry and technology simply moves too quickly for them and leaves them behind. Environmental risk, this covers really all aspects of the firm and its environment. Are there any upcoming events that may affect the firm? And if so, what's it going to do about them? And lastly, fraud risk. This is the risk simply that employees undertake some sort of fraud and it affects the profits of the firm. OK, international risks. Businesses who operate in home aspects and international aspects may face additional risks. There are risks around the culture, not understanding the culture. Litigation, if you don't understand the legal situation as well as you would at home, you may be open to litigation. Credit risk can be a little bit more tricky than at home because it can be more difficult to get paid. Items lost in transit, if you're making a lot of uh, movements of goods across borders, there's a good chance you're going to lose some of them at some stage. And again, currency risk or foreign exchange risk can be a problem for international enterprises. OK, so those are all the different types of risk. Is there a framework that can help to control these risks? Well, yes. We looked at enterprise risk management. 
Okay, and there are several principles to enterprise risk management. Firstly, that risk management is part of the business strategy. It's ingrained in the business strategy. Everyone is responsible for risk management. It doesn't just fall on the risk manager or someone in charge. Everyone is responsible for risk management. And this means that the culture is risk aware. Everyone is aware of the different risks facing the firm and knows how to deal with them. And that all risks are considered. The firm undertakes a risk assessment and really considers every risk that it's facing. Okay, so what is the framework then for enterprise risk management? Well, first of all we look at the internal environment and this sets the tone of the organisation. Again, we were talking about being risk aware. We want to raise a culture of risk awareness within the firm. Objective setting. We want to assess the risk appetite. Are we willing to accept some risks and what do we want to stop? Okay, risk identification. We're going to look at internal risks and the external risks to identify what events could happen to affect the firm. We're there going to under then going to undertake a risk assessment and that's going to look at the likelihood of the risk happening and the impact if it does happen. So we've looked at the risk assessment. How are we going to respond to that risk? We're going to then implement some control activities because that's going to ensure that we have an adequate response or that we stop the risk happening in the first place. So this information has to be communicated throughout the firm. Everyone needs to be aware of the risks so that everyone can undertake the control activities to stop the risks happening or to control them. And this will then have to be monitored by management. Okay, so that's the framework for enterprise risk management. But what are the benefits of having this in place? Well, firstly, you're going to have better decisions because all risks are going to be taken account of. Secondly, you're going to increase shareholder confidence. If they know that you have enterprise risk management in place, you're going to be much more happy to invest in your firm. Again, we're going to raise that risk awareness throughout the firm so that everyone's aware of the risks and they're then less likely to happen. That will lead to cost reductions simply because any risks that were going to occur and make losses shouldn't now happen. Okay, so that is lecture one, risk and governance.